time for member statements. I recognize the member from Halliburton, Kawartha Brock. We have an opportunity to celebrate the anniversaries of two amazing organizations in my riding of Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes Brock. In Bob Cajun, the Boyd Heritage Museum celebrated their 25th anniversary. They have spent over two decades working to preserve the economic, social, and political legacy of Moss and Boyd, who arrived in Upper Canada in 1833 and became known as the Lumber King of the Trent Valley. The history of he and his va uh, family are catalogued artifacts from all significant points in his life, from humble beginnings to national and international success, from tools and log shanties to gorgeous 19th century gowns and dresses. The collections are so exquisite, the exhibit is known as the Downton Abbey of Bob Cajun. <laughs> Barb has been at the helm of this fantastic museum, which has allowed the community of Bob Cajun and the Kawartha Lakes region to remain connected to their history. In the town of Lindsay, the Lindsay Lions Club celebrated their 70th anniversary. The Lions are made up of dedicated men and women who commit their time to help those less fortunate by working with local organizations such as the Ross Memorial Hospital, the Canadian Diabetes Association, the Salvation Army Food Banks, Five Counties Children Treatment Centre, and more to deliver help to those in need. It was heartwarming to see so many volunteers of the community passionate about their service, and their youngest lioness, Ellie, the future of this wonderful program is in good and capable hands. I'd like to wish them 70 more years of success. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Remember from Waterloo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On the day before Pride Month, my message is simple. The Pride flag should fly in every school board in Ontario tomorrow. We're hearing from we are hearing from queer organizers and communities that they are braced for the possibility of violent protests and demonstrations linked to the rising hate targeting the 2SLGBTQ plus community across Canada. In Ontario, we don't have to look far to find examples of this, as the York Catholic Board decided this week to not fly the Pride flag this June. And this backlash is not just about Pride and queer rights. School boards across the province, including in Waterloo, are facing pushback as they work to accomplish equity work. Work, I might add, that is not only important in terms of students' success, but also mandated by the ministry. Every student in Ontario deserves to feel safe and welcome, and they deserve access to visibility and support. Yesterday, the Premier offered a no comment on this issue. The minister himself, the Minister of Education, expressed his disappointment. I want to tell the minister, your disappointment does not help queer kids feel safer at school. I'll reiterate, the pride flag should fly in every school board in Ontario tomorrow. In fact, the rising tide of hate directed at the queer community by a vocal minority displays a visibility like flying the pride flag is particularly important this year. The Ontario NDP is proud to stand with the 2S LGBTQ plus community in solidarity. The member from Newmarket, Aurora. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I'd like to talk about having the honour of attending Girls Incorporated York Region Spirit of the Girl Breakfast last Friday in my riding in Newmarket. Girls Inc. York Region focuses on supporting the resilience of young girls and women and has served my community for over 40 years. Their research-based programs encourage girls to thrive socially, academically, and emotionally in an affirming environment, providing gender-specific support to girls of all backgrounds. It was my privilege to announce at the breakfast on Friday that our government has funded this meaningful work with two grants totaling over $400,000 through the Ontario Trillium Foundation. This will help expand their innovative after-school programs to three new schools, as well as to help increase their capacity to support girls and young women in York Region. Specifically, this funding will enable them to expand staff training, 
provide a social worker for counselling and wellness checks, and expand fundraising efforts. I am so happy to see Girls Inc. York Region empowering girls and young women to meet emotional and academic challenges with resilience, especially those who face various barriers. I am proud that our government will help them expand this crucial work. Thank you to Girls Inc. for making sure no girl is left behind. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The federal government has declared the first Friday in June the National Day Against Gun Violence. But we need to stop, work to stop gun violence at the provincial level as well. Today, I will be tabling a bill to also declare the first Friday in June the Provincial Day Against Gun Violence in Ontario. Gun violence shatters lives and traumatizes communities. The number of shootings is rising from 251 in 2005, which was dubbed the year of the gun, to 365 last year. And these are only Toronto statistics. Gun violence, like a virus, is spreading across the province. On Friday, a number of community groups will be at Queen's Park to ask the Ontario government to address gun violence through a program of prevention, intervention and healing. Prevention begins with addressing the root cause of gun and other community violence, which is poverty and the growing gap between rich and poor. We are calling on the government to raise the minimum wage, double ODSP and OW rates, and to build affordable housing so everyone has a home. Intervention requires the police, but as the police say themselves, they alone cannot solve this issue. You cannot arrest your way out of gun violence. Healing means we must deal with the trauma coming out of each episode of gun violence before it spirals into a vicious cycle of revenge. We need to prevent, intervene, and help communities to heal. I hope the Legislature will call will support my call to declare the first Friday in June the Provincial Day Against Gun Violence in Ontario. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Barry Innisfil. Speaker, I want to congratulate the Season Centre for Grieving Children, which is based in Barrie, Ontario, who received the 2022-23 Attorney General's Victim Service Awards of Distinction from our Attorney General, Minister Doug Downey. The, minister, the Season Centre for Grieving Children offers services at no cost to families and opens its doors to participants aged 5 to 24. The centre relies totally on fundraising and generous corporate and personal donations. Season Centre for Grieving Children is extremely pleased that they've received this award, and I'm pleased to welcome them here today. They're joined today by Hope from Season Centre, who's been travelling, and it's their mascot, she's been travelling around many places in hopes to raise awareness of childhood grief. The Season Centre um, has done a lot of work, and this afternoon I hope many people will be able to meet uh, Hope to spread uh, the word for children experiencing grief and learn more of how they can bring these great services to their own community. So today we have members in the gallery, Rally Rami, Joanna Stockley, who do so much work for the Centre helping families and children, and I hope everyone here can join me for a round of applause to thank them for all the work they and their team does. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. One code red, black, or zero is one too many. That means few or no ambulances or paramedics are available to respond to emergencies. Another code black was called in my community again just last night. Under this Conservative government, code blacks, reds, and zeros are becoming normal, and that is not acceptable. Ontarians deserve to have the confidence that if they have a medical emergency, they can call 911 and receive help quickly. Paramedics are burning out at an alarming rate, and this government isn't taking necessary steps to help our crumbling health care system. In fact, they are actively making the situation worse. The staffing crisis in hospitals leads to longer wait times to transfer patients to the care of nurses and doctors. Paramedics are held up in the hospitals instead of being on the road to save more lives. Bill 124 must be repealed today. Last week was Paramedic Services Week. I thank every paramedic in Windsor, Essex and across the province for their dedication to serving our communities. In October 2022, my NDP colleague MPP Shaw tabled a motion calling on the Conservative government to provide necessary funding to end instances when ambulances are unavailable to respond to an emergency. The motion passed unanimously. However, in March 2023, the Financial Accountability Officer reported the government is withholding $6.4 billion in much-needed support. 
The Conservative government must honour their promise, properly fund our public health care system, support frontline health care workers so they aren't doing their jobs without adequate support, and ensure code reds, blacks and zeros are not the normal on Ontario, because lives depend on it. Thank you very much. Member statements. Oh, no, no. Kitchener Conestoga. Well, it's very good. Thank you, Speaker. It is, uh, of course, with great pride that I rise today, and for the first time in franchise history, the Wellesley Applejacks are small, uh, the Schmaltz Cup champions. Wellesley willed their way to the Ontario Junior C Championship with a 3-2 win over Clarington Eagles earlier this month. Noah Bender, a rookie goalie for the Applejacks, was named tournament MVP. Congratulations to coach Ryan Gerber and the rest of the staff and, of course, their great leadership. Thank you to the players, fans, volunteers and sponsors that made this historic season possible. They had a hero's welcome in Wellesley earlier this week, complete with a fire truck escort through the streets for their championship parade, Mr. Speaker. We have a lot to celebrate in Wellesley, as we are set to open a new and improved Wellesley Arena next year. The community centre will feature a hockey rink, two soccer pitches, spaces for a youth drop-in centre and senior centre, a walking track and a gymnasium. The province is contributing over $16 million to the roughly $22 million facility. We got the arena built together, but you guys got us a banner to raise. Speaker, I have one question for you. How do you like them, Apple Jacks? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> member statements. The member for Beaches East York. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and wonderful Wednesday, everyone. There is nothing gutsier than a gutsy walk. The Crohn's and Colitis Society of Ontario does amazing work supporting people suffering from this chronic illness. Over 300,000 Canadians already have, have it, with someone new being diagnosed with Crohn's or colitis every hour in Canada. There is, are no known cures for Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, and that is why we need to walk. For my family, this debilitating disease is quite personal as my powerful and passionate daughter, Becca, was first diagnosed with Crohn's at 16. She has learned to live with this diagnosis, navigating healthcare systems both in Ontario and British Columbia, traveling through Asia, working, studying, and trying to live a full life. She is now 23 and realizes that she will never fully be able to plan ahead in life, as Crohn's has a way of flaring up just when you least expect it. Becca McMahon, like others, puts on a brave face and tackles the world with courage every single day. Today, I would like to encourage my fine feather colleagues to take a part in this tremendously important uh, crusade this Sunday, June 4, 10 a.m., all over Ontario. Be gutsy, join the gutsy walk. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Essex. Hey. Mr. Speaker, today I have a very sad statement. Today I'm paying tribute to deceased OPP officer Stephen Tarangio, who was killed in an automobile accident this week. Stephen Tarangio was a native of Essex County. He entered law enforcement and last held the rank of detective constable with the Huron County OPP. He was 35. He is survived by his wife, Danica, and his three sons, Everett, Luke, and Drew. My wife, Jackie, and Stephen were first cousins. Stephen's mother and my wife's mother are sisters, and I know this family very well. Stephen's father, Marcel Tarangio, is a loving Pepe with a big heart. Stephen's mother, Kathy Tarangio, is a dedicated Meme with a heart of gold. They are good people beautiful people, and this is a tragic loss. Today, my heart goes out to the family and to all the grieving parents who have lost a child before their time. Thank you.
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. On Monday, May 29th, Stephen Taranjo donned the uniform of the Ontario Provincial Police, ready to serve and safeguard our rural communities. Regrettably, Speaker, Stephen's return home was not to be. Detective Constable Taranjo, a valued member of the OPP Perth County Detachment, an integral part of the Huron Perth Community Street Crime Unit, met a tragic fate. His life was abruptly cut short in a devastating collision between his, his police cruiser and a school bus in Zora Township. At the age of 35, we mourn the untimely loss of Constable Taranjo, a loss that reverberates deeply through our community and the Ontario, on the entire Perth County OPP detachment. He leaves behind his beloved wife, Danica, and their three young boys. At, uh, speaker, it's incumbent upon us to acknowledge that we can never fully repay the debt we owe to our first responders, those stalwart individuals who place themselves in harm's way each and every day to safeguard our well-being. Let us also remember the tragic fate of David Stewart, the school bus driver, who met an untimely end. For over a decade, David dedicated his days to driving school bus, his second act following a successful career as a motorcycle and small engine mechanic. He leaves behind his cherished wife and best friend, Wendy, whom he shared 47 years with. David was a loving father to four daughters and a source of immense pride as a grandfather. My thoughts and prayers go out to both families, burdened with unimaginable grief during this difficult time. I, I want to let them know that the people of Ontario stand united, offering our support and unwavering solidarity. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much.